So after s almost 16 hours of print time, uh, it's complete. And uh, we'll see if I have to make another one. I'm hoping I don't. But um, yeah, so um, if you recall from the the rundown of the print we did have i did have some issues that i ran into so uh we're gonna see how those translated to our finished product here uh in terms of any uh maintenance and repair we'll have to do before we can uh get to the finished product so um so first off the support material um i went through the trouble of taking off this piece which is the support for the actual lid, lid I guess, uh, for the lack of a better term. Um, I had a little bit of trouble getting it off, um, and actually I will show you why that was the case. So, if you can see, and hopefully I'm not making this too weird, but um, so that threading I was talking about, uh, really really showed through I mean like to the point where there's some gaps there's lots of loose threads of plastic um, and whatnot but most of it though not perfectly flat uh, is functional like I can um, I can work with it so it's just it's these gaps where that first layer that rested on this because I mean you know it's it's kind of just a uh, I mean, I don't even know how to explain it, but I mean, it's it's basically it's just you know laying it's trying to lay a f uh, a solid surface on a non-solid surface. So um, so I, honestly, I didn't know what to expect, but uh, I I'm not surprised that it's not perfect. So um, so that's issue number one. Um, issue number two is. The fact that the hole where the bouquet goes uh, is full, um, like I explained in the uh, previous episode, it's about 10 millimeters thick, and I don't know how well this is going to show up here, but um, basically the entire thickness of our little dome support so that the, uh, the cone and the lid actually had some more surface area for connection, like per basically that whole area got solidified. So um, I'll have to uh, drill or gouge or whatever I'm going to end up doing to get that out so that the bouquet will fit in. So unfortunately for this phase, I don't get to do a bouquet fit in here so that we can do an overall visual, um, which saddens me, but uh, we will get to that as soon as I can get that whole, as soon as I get that piece bored out. Um, so there is more support material in here, but I think I'm just going to leave it. It's not getting in the way. Um, it seems that the, you know, the ridge where the can is actually going to go is pretty solid. So, uh, so at least it did its job because it doesn't need to look pretty. Um, and otherwise, I mean, it's awful sturdy. So, uh, mission accomplished on every other part so fortunately this is not uh anything that cannot be dealt with so the one thing that is going to determine whether or not this is the one that gets to go ahead is whether or not it fits on the can so why don't we get that out of the way so It doesn't seem to just set on there, so I'm going to have to put some pressure on it. There we go. So, uh, it looks like, same as with the test ring, uh, though it's a little bit snugger than the test ring, um, it's tight in that same way. It's on, the, it's on the inner lip instead of the outer lip. So we ended up with just a little bit of a gap between the can and, and the top, but that's okay. Um, I think otherwise to look at it, and it's, you know, it's kind of hard to tell because it's all multicolored and not right, but 
I think the dimensions are correct. Like this will end up being a pretty good warp pipe. Um, and I mean, and it's, <laughs> it's not like, like I probably, I probably won't even have to glue this onto the can. That is how well it stays. I mean, <laughs> holy crap. So, and it, yeah, it's not, it's not damaging anything on the inside of the lip either. So yeah, I don't think, I don't even think I'm going to have to adhese that, which is just fine by me. Like, you know, having that option to, to be able to remove it, uh, is really cool. Um, so yeah, I think, I think from there, uh, this one, this one with a little bit of work is a keeper. Um, you know, we'll have to do some sanding and, uh, just in terms of moving forward in general, um, I don't want these grooves in the can and I think I addressed that earlier. Um, so I'm going to end up sanding all of this out. I mean, it's, everything's going to get a good sanding anyway, so that it'll take paint. But, um, these gaps, um, I got some Bondo to fill in and I think I'm just going to do the same thing with this top. I'll get rid of all of these extra threads and then I will just put Bondo and to give us a nice smooth surface to paint on the top. Um, because I mean like there's, you know, there's the little, little bit of a lip. So I think, I don't think there will be an issue moving forward and that makes me very, very happy. So um, I guess next will be all of the prep to, to to get to the painting phase. Um, so what that's looking like is um, the the outside here will get a nice sand, um, and then I'll do like I did with the uh, the bender and give it a couple of hits of the uh, Mod Podge to uh, to extra smooth it, and uh, so that way you know it'll look it'll look really really nice when we get the paint on. Uh, I'll bore out that center hole so we can actually do the bouquet test. Um, I will probably make that a priority. So on the next uh, phase, um, I'll probably start with the maintenance of the topper um, and then give the whole can a good sand, get those gaps bondoed in. Um, I'll do all of the bondo at once. So basically it'll be prepping both pieces, then doing the bondo, then finishing them both up, then moving to the paint phase. Um, but yeah, so I'll get that board out. That'll be yep, yeah, mission number one to get that board out and actually put the bouquet in and get the bouquet test taken care of. Um, and you know, I just kind of getting a rough draft look of how it's going to be. Um, so yeah, I guess I will get things set up to start prepping the topper. See you there. All right, so I lied. I said I was gonna work on the topper first, and I'm not. <laughs> um, I decided to go with the can first, not for any particular reason. Um, it's just when I came when I came back to uh, actually do the first to, to do the, the prep for Bondo, um, I grabbed the can and started with it. So, um, so that's what I did. Um, I. Uh, got some new foam blocks. I got two different types, um, a coarse one and a finer one. Uh, I'm using the coarse one here. Uh, it didn't say on the package because it just came from Harbor Freight as the, as the coarse one, but I figure it's somewhere right around 80 grit, uh, which works fine for what I'm doing here, which is basically just a, a pretty thorough once over to make sure that uh, all the paint that I can actually get at with the block is uh, is roughed up good to accept paint. Um, I've never worked with Bondo before, so knowing that my, you know, going from here, next phase is Bondo, um, it, uh, well, like I said, I never, I've never used it before. I've used stuff like it, um, but, uh, 
never something quite so liquid like the stuff that I've used before has been for smaller applications and it's a bit tackier. It's more like a silly putty, whereas uh, Bondo is, uh, well, it's, it's more liquid until it sets. Um, so I just kind of went forward with my knowledge from painting and that is when you have smooth surface, you, uh, you rough it up so that it'll take paint. I figured the same would apply for Bondo. Um, and you can see now that I'm on like on the third ring of it that those divots um, are actually pretty deep. I couldn't even get the foam block into it. Uh, so it was, I don't know, right about now I figured that, and I knew I was going to have to for touch up anyway, but uh, when I, when I finished doing the, the general roughing here, um, the, uh, the next phase of the cleaning, I guess, is, uh, going to be done with the Dremel. I, uh, yeah, I, this whole procedure only took a few minutes. Um, I mean, it is sped up here, but it's only double speed maybe. So, uh, so what turns up being, you know, like about three minutes here on the video was only like six or seven minutes of real time. Um, cause like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't going super crazy with it. Um, I just wanted a good roughing as a starting point. So there is that. And, uh, I go and get the Dremel. And so, uh, of course, I cleaned up my area really quick. Um, the um, attachment that I'm using on the Dremel is actually a really cool thing. I will uh, put up a picture of it so you can see what it is uh, up close. It's uh, it it's like a grinding wheel, but it's built specifically for sanding. Um, and it was I mean you can just see how well it gets into that gap and. Uh, takes the paint out of there. I was, I was really, really impressed. It's, um, I will probably end up having many of these cause, uh, where they work really well. Um, it's made out of some kind of a plastic, I think. Um, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't stand up to a whole lot of use, but, uh, like you can see when, when I'm pot making those pauses and, uh, and things, it's because little pieces came flying off. Um, so, and, and that's by design, you know, it's designed to, you know, as it takes wear and tear, it breaks away. And, uh, so you have access to the fresher parts of the bristles, um, so that it will still sand well. Um, and, yeah, no, I'd, I'd never used that particular attachment before, and it just did crazy, crazy well, as you can see here. Um, and so, yeah, I just used that to to finish up all the areas I couldn't get in with the blocks. It's actually kind of crazy how, uh, how uneven the side of that can actually is. I'd have never guessed it was as, you know, like I thought that the divots, you know, there and there'd be some a little bit of warping from the divots being put in the metal, but... Uh, yeah, there was all kinds. So with that done, the last thing I needed to do is uh, clean the surface. So I pulled out my secret weapon, which is just old baby wipes. They're still wet, but they're they're older. So I don't, you know, I wouldn't want to use them uh, on a baby. But because uh, I mean, like I said, they're I think they were a couple of years old but they were just fine for the application I was using them for here, which is getting all of the fine dust, uh, you know, out of the grooves and whatnot for this thing. So it was nice and clean, um, for the, uh, for the application of the Bondo. Um, it worked pretty much as expected. Um, I got all of the remaining dust and particulate off of the surface and out of the grooves. And now the can is ready for Bondo.